Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to come on here and share something that I recently did. Um, this is something I feel that might be helpful to you if you are trying to enhance your windows or you wanted to dress it up, add some color, and maybe you have like a shade like this that is white but you want to add color but you don't really know what to do. This is the window of one of my clients and uh, she has relaxed Roman shades which she's going to change out to a flat roman shade um, because she just doesn't like the look of it but she wants to add color and she's not really sure so i was like hey i can make a cornice board um this is my first time making it but i think i can do it so i wanted to show you some other colors that she has in the room so the chair is burgundy as well as the rug so i thought that maybe we should add a burgundy accent to her window if you are not familiar with a cornice board um this is kind of how it looks you can go on Pinterest and see so many different ideas. I actually went on here just to try to figure out how I'm going to do it. What I normally do is just look at a couple of DIYs that people have done and kind of pick and choose which method I would like to do that's easy because I, you know this is my first time so I wanted something easy so let's just do the regular you know straight um, cornice board and then you know kind of do something where it's easy to hook it to the wall and if you see my cursor you know I like that method where she uses uh, the D ring in that project um, so that's what I plan on doing before you start this project there's three things you want to know the width of the cornice board the depth and the height for this one I am going to have a height of 10 inches um by 43 inches wide and i want it 3.5 inches deep i purchased my wood from lowe's and they actually cut all of these pieces down to the size that i needed so since i have everything cut i'm just going to go ahead and glue the ends of it i'm going to use gorilla glue for this make sure it is it does not foam or you can use whatever glue that you have um, that is appropriate for wood so what we're going to do is just place a little bit of glue on the end of the smaller pieces of wood and then connect it to the long piece of wood. We want to do this on both sides. Once that was complete, I left it alone for at least 12 hours. After the glue dried, I decided to add L brackets to the piece of wood just for added security. And I went ahead and marked two inches in on all four corners. Then I place one of the L brackets where I had the mark and then I trace an outline of the circles. This was done in each corner. So what you wanna do is create pilot holes right where you have your circles. You don't want to go all the way through the wood. Now that we have our pilot holes, it's time to add the screws. So I'm going to place the L bracket right where we have the holes and I'm going to take the screws that come with the pack and just screw it in. Next, we wanna place our batting underneath the wood and I already went ahead and cut the batting to size. Um, so whatever size your corners is, you want to add at least like 10 inches. You want enough to cover the sides. To attach the batting, what we're going to use is a staple gun. If you are not familiar with the staple gun, what you want to do to use it is pinch the end of it, pull it out, and then put your staples inside and then hold the end of it and push it in. And here is the look at the package of staples that I'm using for this project. When you start stapling, you want to do it from the center outward. I'm going to leave the ends alone for now and just go on the opposite side and do the same thing. Okay, now let's fold over the batten on the sides and staple it down. Okay, now we want to fold down the corners. To do this, we need to get rid of some of the batting. So what I'm going to do is take my fabric scissors and cut out a square, starting with the edge going inward and then cutting down. Then I'm going to tuck in the excess batting and staple it down.
Once that's finished, you want to take your fabric and you want the size of the fabric to be a little bit larger than the piece. You want to make sure the edges will go over the sides of the cornice board and you want to make sure the fabric is face down, the good side face down on the table. To do both of these cornice boards, I only needed two yards of fabric. Okay, so now it's time to staple and we're going to do the same process as we did for the batting. You want to start in the center and then work outwards. On the opposite side, I'm going to do the same process except I'm going to fold in the edge. Um, that's because it has a rough edge on that side. On the sides, there was a lot of tension, so I'm just relieving that by cutting um, some of the fabric back. Then I folded the fabric over and then start stapling it down. Um, I did want to staple the inside of the um, side, so I just took my stapler and just put a couple of staples in there. After you do that, you just want to fold in the corners and then just get rid of the excess fabric that you don't need. It's not perfect or anything like that, but I think I did a good job for my first time. <laughs> and here's me doing the other side. This just gives you a different perspective. Um, maybe you can see something on this side that you did not see on the other side. I could not find my fabric scissors. These scissors are really dull. So make sure you have some really good fabric scissors that are sharp. The method that I'm going to do to hang the cornice board required me to cut two pieces of wood down to the same height as the cornice board. So what I did was take one of the pieces of wood and screw it down to one side and then do the other. And I used one and a half inch screws for this. And then I placed the D-ring on top. And you wanna make sure the D-ring is the same position as it is on the opposite side. Meaning if you have it three inches on one side going down the piece of wood, you need to have it three inches on the opposite side. Here's a look at the D-rings that I use for this project. And you know, I will make sure I put the link to the blog that I uh, followed um, to do this project. And here's how it turned out. So please ignore the shade. We're gonna change that out. But besides that, I think it turned out nice. For me, the project was very simple to do. The hardest part was hanging it on the wall. I simply put in two um, drywall screws on the wall and then hook it to the D-ring. So guys, if you have any questions, just drop it in the comment section below and I will also put the link to the blog that is a little bit more detailed than what I shared. Thanks guys for watching.